Cheers. Oh, yeah. this is going to be so much fun. I am so looking forward to picking your brain uh, all about yeah. your, uh, your remodel and your renovation. And it's mostly a personal thing because we're renovating our trailer right now as well. So we'll um, let some people uh, watch in on Facebook and YouTube. But mostly I just want to ask you questions and pick your brain a little bit. So. Pick away. It's going to be a pick lot of fun. Bro. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, <laughs> if, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, let us know you can hear us. Let us know that the audio is working and, and everything's working well. And also let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to know where you're watching from tonight. Mark and Julie, where are you guys tonight? We are at Garden of the Gods RV Resort in Colorado Springs. So it's about an hour and a bit south of Denver. And beautiful, beautiful part of the country. It's one yeah, of our favorites. It's actually. one of our favorites. In fact, that's why we chose it for this pandemic period is because we knew we'd be really comfortable being here for an extended period of time if need be. We had a two-part place. Part one was boondocking in the desert. Part then it started getting really hot. Part two you're in a campground with hookups. <laughs> well, I've been watching your uh, pictures on Instagram and just the scenery and what you're getting to see. Of course, you know, we haven't been yet to Garden of the Gods, but we can't wait to get there. Hopefully it is soon. right in our backyard, Adam. We can literally walk or bike. So one of the reasons we chose this place, we've been here before a few times, is if the restrictions got any, you know, because this is back in early April, we thought if it gets any more restrictive with travels and you can't drive, then we could always walk and bike. So it's part of our strategy. Okay, so it is kind of in our game plan, you know, at least it was up until a few weeks ago, because who knows now at this point. But we're going to go to that area in the fall. What's the must-see at Garden of the Gods? Well, definitely Garden of the Gods Park. And if you possibly can go during the week, because it gets really busy on weekends. Mm -hmm. Even now during the pandemic, it's been yeah. quite, quite busy on weekends. Well, assuming it's open, I think it'd be good to go to the top of Pikes Peak. It's a 14,000-foot yes. mountain, and you can actually drive all the way to the top. In fact, it's actually now, it's paved all the way to the top. So you can mm -hmm. actually drive up there really easy with any car. And it's pretty cool to be on top of a 14,000-foot The views beach. are amazing. And so that's definitely something to look into. Hell Cheyenne Mountain Zoo yep. is the only mountain zoo in the country. So that's a pretty cool experience too, assuming it's open. Helen Hunt Falls, we took a drive up to this week. There's a nice little curvy mountain road drive. And there is some very cool metal sculptures that are, I don't know how tall they are, like 100 feet tall. Anyway, that's there's People. some great. There's, there's a lot. There's of great a lot stuff to do in the area. A lot of good stuff. Yeah. There's a yeah. another popular one in this region is Gar is a Cave of the Winds. Mm -hmm. um, and some people like that. And you just can't go wrong in Colorado. Just point <laughs> and drive and find something beautiful. We we lived Adam. We were actually lived in Colorado before we hit the road. Mark's okay. a Colorado native. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't wait to see all of that and more. And a hike up a paved road on four wheels sounds like just the type of hike I'm into. So I can't <laughs> wait to hike up Pikes Peak in my car. Uh, I think Adam would be up for the Manitou incline. That's a really hardcore hike. And I'm like, hell no. Like, Mark could probably do it. I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to stay yeah. home and yeah. read a book. You know, people actually race up it on foot, too. Uh, that's Good for them. That, that, <laughs> right. Good for them. Yeah, I'm brutal. sure that 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 sounds like it would be worth watching on YouTube somewhere is uh, that right. hike up there. But I'm not sure I would ever do it myself. <laughs> watch, the, uh, watch the auto races up it, too. That's been a long standing tradition because back when it was a dirt road, it was started as a race up to the top of the mountain. And then, mm -hmm. of course, as the more and more of the road has gotten paved, the times have gotten faster and faster and probably a few less fatalities, too. But uh yeah, that's it. Those are, there's definitely some good footage of the Pikes Peak Hill Climb and car racing. Well, today we're here to talk about your RV remodel. So why don't you take us back a few steps and tell us what kind of RV you have and all the details of where you started and why you decided to remodel. And then there's plenty of questions to come from there. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, so this RV that we did the remodel on is our second RV. It's a Class A motorhome. It's a 1999 Country Coach diesel pusher. It's about 40 feet long with a single slide. And when we bought this, we bought it knowing from day one we were going to do a remodel on it. Yep. So we bought it at a very low price point, and uh, we we also we, knew it needed some work done on it. We knew it needed some, some work, but we too. also knew that the, the floor plan and it had good bones as far as the way 
these are very high quality coach in their day. Yeah. And so we knew that this would be a good starting point to be able to do a major renovation on. Right. And we also knew that I was going to be predominantly doing most of that work myself because after I used to do construction myself and then after doing 20 factory tours of RVs, I'm like, you know, I can totally do this. I'm not afraid <laughs> I'm, I'm going to jump into it. And so he wasn't too scared to, we knew from day out. one. Yeah. And we knew it was going to be big, but uh, we're, it was a, it's a really exciting project. But this is our second RV. And for those that may not know us or our channel RV love, we've been full-time RVs for actually next month will be six years. We've been full-time on the road. And our first RV was a 36 foot class, a gas motor home that was only two years old when we bought it. So it didn't need anything done to it all, which we're really happy about because we just wanted to hit the road and travel and explore. And Mark had a full-time job and we didn't have the time or the skills for a remodel or the patience. I think. Yeah, we, we did just, a small change in that coach in that we converted the bunkhouse area mm -hmm. I, I know you mentioned you have bunks in yours you'll be using from for bunks uh, when ours we bought a bunkhouse model to be able to convert that into a set de dedicated office yep. space and uh, because that's important for us but uh, after three and a half years of that RV we had a lot more confidence a lot more experience as RV is and like Mike said with his construction background and touring 20 different RV factories around the country. We were just like, yeah, let's yeah. do it. And, and more flexibility in our time because yeah. then when we had this, we were working for ourselves. When we had our first coach, I was working for someone else. And so right. I didn't have the flexibility in my schedule to do a project like that. But by the time we took this one on, we'd already visited all 50 states. And there's still a lot more to see, but we kind of felt less like, you know, we need to be out there traveling as much as we did when we first hit the road. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tady is, uh, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Tady, maybe it's Taddy, uh, McAllister is asking, they're, uh, about to purchase a newer Class A, uh, and they would like to decorate, but they're having some concerns about the wallpaper and hanging things on the wall. So, how did you get around the wallpaper that was originally in your RV, and have you had any challenges with hanging things on the wall? Well, I would say command hooks are your friend because just get those ones that you can remove them and it doesn't damage what's behind it. And we had those all over our first RV. Mm. Uh, we actually have them in this one as well. We hang everything up with the command hooks uh, or the command Velcro strips. If you're mm. putting artwork on the wall and that way they don't swing when you're driving, they stay <laughs> stuck. But command strips, command strips are awesome our first rv had brown wallpaper like so many RVs have lots of brown and so we didn't do anything with it because it was a newer coach and we didn't want to do that but this one being 20 years old it's actually a, was a pretty unobtrusive white wallpaper with like a pearlescent florally texture to be honest it was in really good condition but it was dated so we just painted straight over it we we cleaned it primed it painted over it with white paint and uh, it's nice because it's got a little texture behind it, but uh, so that works well. But good old command strips to hang anything up and it won't damage your wallpaper. If you've followed the instructions on how to put it on and how to take it. <laughs> right. Thank you for that question. If you're watching right now, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, please leave a question uh, for Mark and Julie from RV Love about their renovation on their uh, Class A motorhome. Any questions you have about renovating your RV and also, if you look in the description, you're going to see a contest that Mark and Julie have entered. And it's really easy. You just click the link, and then you click the thumbs up button on their pictures. Um, and the pictures is the first one that show up when you click that link. Guys, tell us a little bit about this contest. How did you hear about it, and how did you get involved with it? You know, it's been on my to-do list <laughs> for a while. Once we finished our renovation and we got the photos taken, um, to submit the photos to apartment therapy because I love seeing how people make their small spaces creative and beautiful and maximize the space and really just do a lot. Small spaces can be a challenge, but it's really rewarding that you can see what you can do with a small space. And I was kind of on my to-do list forever. And then, then a competition popped up, a contest. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm a person that responds well to deadlines. <laughs> And so, okay, I have a deadline. So I pulled together our photos. I write up a little story about it and uh, gave acknowledgement, of course, to our designer friend, Jane Brown of Jane Brown Interiors, who was the, you know, creative visionary behind the design of our RV. She's a friend of mine I've had for about 15 years and she's helped me with all my places in Australia and in uh, Colorado. And 
And so uh, she helped us with our motorhome as well. But so that that was really the inspiration. I think just being a fan of apartment therapy and when they had the small and cool contest and they have four different categories of different sizes of homes or, or apartments. And so ours is in the tiny category, which is 250 to 500 square feet and voting open today, May 18th, and it finishes on Sunday. So please go vote for us just as an easy thumbs up. So one thing I noticed when I voted today is that your as soon as I voted for your listing, it went to the top of the list or it climbed up the list. So it looks Did? like the more votes we're getting, the higher it's going to get up the list. So everybody watching right now, go ahead and click, <laughs> click that link in a new window. Don't close this one and go vote. Uh, and then or if your window accidentally closes, make sure you come back and hang out. We've got... Lots of questions to ask about uh, Mark and Julie's RV renovation. And also, this is a good time to plug season two of the RVers is now live on Discovery. And uh, Mark and Julie are special guests on season two, and they're going to be on the PBS airings. uh, And of course, all of the online airings of season two. And uh, so that's why we're hanging out to ask, to answer your questions all about uh, RV renovations. Okay. Um, we've got another question. Somebody's asking, what did you learn not to do? So mm-hmm. what was something that you did and you thought, oh, next time we probably won't do that one again? How long have we got? I know the first answer that comes to my mind. What would well, you say? Well, Julie probably knows what I'm going to say. We would not set such a tight deadline. Yeah. Um, we, we, we kind of set ourselves up for trouble with that because we, we had s- s- committed to having a professional film crew filmed the after of it, and we knew that Jane Brown, her, her friend, the designer, was had a very limited time she could be there, and so we had a hard deadline to finish this by, and it was the project grew in scope in the, but the timeline mm-hmm. only got shorter. So the we did time, it in four weeks. I would Adam. I would not recommend trying to take on a project of this size in less than four weeks. Um, no, don't do it. We did it, but don't do it. We all, but I want to say, <coughs> excuse me, we also had a team. So Mark was very fortunate that he's handy. Uh, so he's experienced with a lot of construction. So I think your skill level and your comfort level has to be a part of your planning process before you undertake any RV renovation. But we were lucky to have Jane, who's not only got great style and great, she's really good with small spaces and she knows us well and she's she's handy. She's really great with all the tools. She was in there doing stuff, and our friends Brett and Danelle, whose property we were parked on, they were also helping us. So we actually had five of us, not five full time, but um, yeah. it was a we had quite a few but, hands on deck. But to that point, you know, there's a lot of th- there's a lot of things that we could advise people against, but not think not because we did them, because we fortunately we had thought this through pretty well and we yeah. made a lot of decisions ahead of time that saved us a lot of those don'ts you know like having a good place to do it having the support group having a lot of yeah. environment yeah yeah so a time frame <laughs> it's always going to take longer than you <laughs> so tom and kate are asking about how did you decide on colors and style um tom and kate morton from morton's on the move so i i know that you said you had a designer who was helping you um but yeah. where did you go for inspiration well, I think the first thing is when we found CCM, we'd been shopping coaches quietly for about a year before we found this one. We looked at hundreds and all different ages, models, sizes. And when we found this, we knew what a basic list was. And when we found this one, it was all white cabinetry, very light inside, which is really unusual. And it's starting to see a lot more of that now in some of the newer RVs. Mm-hmm. But most people know RVs are brown and beige and very drab. And so this had all white cabinetry, white walls, light gray carpet and neutral tile. So it's a very neutral palette. So we knew right away that it was going to be light and bright and that we could we, we, we wanted it to be white. And so that was um, the first thing. And then... It had neutral. We did. We wanted to keep a lot of the uh, original pieces, Adam, in CC because we could have gutted the coach and then just done it all brand new. But you know, that's a, a more expensive and time. Actually, time right. was a big consideration. We had to work out what we could do in the time frame because Jane, God love her, she she used to be an international flight attendant. So for her to she when I I thought she was going to help us through Skype. You know, we've done that before. She's in Australia. I was in Colorado. She helped us do our apartment, our condo there. But 
she said, why don't I just jump on a jet and I'll help you do it? I'm like, seriously? So she came out <laughs> to 8,000 miles and spent a month with us. We got her a camper on the property. And so when she got here, we're like, well, we're keeping the countertops because they're a light gray and neutral and unobtrusive. We're keeping the furniture, even though it's older, it's still good quality and comfortable and it's light gray. So it's a very neutral palette. But I, I personally had no idea what to do with what other colors could we do to bring it to life? And that that's really Jane's magic. I mean, that's her. Uh, she was the one. I picked her up from the airport and uh, we didn't even go to the coach. She had not seen it. She'd only seen photos. And we went straight to a flooring store. And I had in my mind all this grey floor I thought I wanted. But she walked into this place and she's like, no, nope, this, 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 and walked out with this darker wood grain type flooring and some marble tile for the backsplash which I never would have thought of and and it just worked so I, I really have to give credit to Jane for that and she brought in blue and sort of silver so it's like a very kind of neutral but sophisticated sort of light gray white darker wood to kind of give it some grounding and, and blue and so it's it's kind of Kind of grown up, I guess. <laughs> that's, her, that's all her doing, not mine. <laughs> so basically, we all need a Jane in our lives, right? That's how we're going to oh, pick our colors. <laughs> yeah, she's a miracle worker. <laughs> Jake is asking. He's he's uh, bought a, a holiday Rambler, and he's been focusing on. Uh, mechanical and deferred maintenance before the interior. So he's asking what sort of work was needed to get CC roadworthy. And we should say CC is the nickname for your coach, right? So in yeah. case anybody's wondering. Country <laughs> coach, we call it a CC because on the steering wheel, it's got a CC. On, and and I love Elvis. And Elvis fan for CC, CC rider. rider. Yeah. <laughs> so we should, we should make sure we clarify that before we just start talking about it as if we all know. But uh, So uh, Mark, what kind of, or uh, yeah, Mark, what kind of uh, work was needed to get CC roadworthy and how did you prioritize that balancing uh, getting on the road? Well, I mean, there's some things that when we were first shopping the coach, we knew were extremely important. We had a professional inspection to come mm -hmm. for it, but even before the inspector came, I knew that the tires were old. I mean, the tires were, they had hidden Terrible. the date codes, but the, just by looking at them, I knew they were old. And once I got them off, they were 12 year old tires and um, there were chunks missing out of them. They were in bad shape. So I actually, prioritization wise, I went and put, even though the fuel gauge was on E, I went and put new tires on it before I put fuel on board. Um, but yeah, after that, I went and you know had had it serviced at the mechanic, mm -hmm. and I took care of some other small things, changed the, air, change filter. the air filters and oils, and and a lot of those small maintenance. And then um, one of the next big projects we did actually before it was mostly roadworthy though. Um, yeah. it was mostly the tires and that. <laughs> and but then a major project we did before we dug into the beautification project was we were setting up the power system for this coach. We made a significant upgrade to the power system with they had terrible solar power. Battery. Yeah, they had, we, we had, had terrible batteries, and the inverter didn't work. Yeah, the inverter didn't work, and then the batteries were actually starter batteries, not even house proper house batteries, mm -hmm. but we replaced all the batteries. Well, we got a new chassis battery, and then all the house batteries replaced with Battleborn lithium batteries. Mm -hmm. We have 600 amp hours of lithium, and then we also put on 1,000 watts of solar mm -hmm. and uh, Victron, Victron inverter. inverter and color control. So that was a major, major project for us, mm -hmm. and which actually turned out to be kind of fun because that project and making it roadworthy or life-worthy, I guess, it was also made it a fun part of the project in that when we showed up at our friend's house to do this project, he pulled out his power cord and asking us where, you know, to plug us in. And we said, you know what? Let's try an experiment. Let's see if we can do the whole thing unplugged. And um, sure enough, so we did. We, we did the whole thing off grid. We, wow. When we first bought the coach, we took it boondocking in Sedona and just to see how it worked with everything that we had in it. We lived in it for three months before we wanted to make changes. But when we did that, that was in Texas, and we had a whole team. I just want to call out it. We had a whole team. This is the RV community for you. We had a whole team of RVers help us with that project. It was triple digits in Texas. We were at a campground and we were without power for three days in triple digits. Luckily, we had a tree of RVers. <laughs> but we had like half a dozen RV uh, guys from our community helping that were just amazing. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're watching, Gary Quimby, Justin Ford, John Jedlow, uh, Dan Brown, 
Oh, and Eric McCauley Eric drew McCauley. up the diagram for it. Yeah, there was we a couldn't have done it without them. Could not have done that without them, mm -hmm. for sure. That was not my skills. Uh, but to finish up on Jake's, you know, I've had some other roadworthiness fixes, quite a few of them. Quite a few. <laughs> in the One following just, The new box arrived from Amazon today. <laughs> yeah, we just got another part today, yeah. But, Hashtag uh, RV for, life. But, you know, there's definitely been no shortage of those in the last two years. But ahead of time, that was... It was mostly just tires, batteries, and power. Yeah, yeah. So uh, talk to me a little bit about how you decided on wanting a Class A because when my wife and I were first wanting to get on the road, one of the things that we talked about was that if we were going to buy an older trailer, our first trailer was 26 years old when we bought it, and renovate it, we didn't want it to be also the motor Right? We wanted to have a separate tow vehicle so that if something went wrong with the motor, we could replace the tow vehicle without having to replace this new RV we just renovated. Uh, but it sounds like your approach is a little bit different. So tell me a little bit about how you balance out that. Well, I think part of it started from our original research before we even hit the road in that one of the first steps I recommend to people when they're trying to make that decision is ask themselves what's in their driveway right now. You know, if they already have a truck, if they already have a viable towing vehicle, then that's going to quickly steer mm -hmm. you down the path of buying a towable RV because one of the most expensive parts of that is the towing vehicle. But Julie mm -hmm. and I, when we were getting ready for this decision, we looked in our garage and we had a Mazda MX-5 Miata <laughs> and we had a WRX Subaru. We had two sports cars. And, and a convertible. So neither <laughs> of them were going to be able to tow anything. And uh, so we knew we were going to need a, a new vehicle regardless. Yeah. And so, but we really liked the idea of having a spirited toy car to drive mm -hmm. around. So that's when we sold those two cars, bought a Mini Cooper, and chose to tow that behind a motorhome. And so mm -hmm. starting off our travels that way, I think, is part of what steered us throughout of having this remodel on this being an older coach. And to your point of the mechanicals, the downside is there's a two mechanicals to manage, but by towing a second vehicle, we do always have that reliability to run around, but it, uh, there is the two mechanicals for sure. Yeah, and I think some people don't, like if you have a motorhome and tow a vehicle, then you're dealing with two drivetrains, and I think a lot of people don't want to have to worry about two. Um, well, and also it's a factor, Julie's under five feet tall, and so driving a big vehicle, a towing vehicle is not practical, and at the mm -hmm. time we hit the road, she was the one that was doing most of the errands because I had no very little flexibility in my mm -hmm. schedule. And so that was another mm -hmm. reason to steer towards motorhome. And home. Mark really liked fifth wheels, but if anyone's been inside fifth wheels, usually the cupboards are really high and I can't <laughs> reach them. So it's been, me being le one of the big reasons why we haven't gone down the track of a truck and fifth wheel is my size. And most people are not as small as me. So, you know, not being able to get in the truck and drive it around as easily and not being able to reach the cupboards in the fifth wheel – I mean, that's they were ergonomic decisions. <laughs> those are, yeah, those are definitely factors. And then, yeah. you know, travel pace is another a big one I would recommend to people consider when they're looking at um, an RV. If you're, yeah, how the faster, faster your travel pace, the more likely I'd lean you towards a motorized. Yeah. So tell so me, there's a lot of pack up and sit, you know, set up and pack down more involved with towable. But you know, we know. 85% of people have a towable RV and uh, they tend to be more affordable uh, more, yeah. entry point. And so, you know, there are definitely advantages to both. I, I love asking that question because I, I always love to find out uh, how each person got to the point where they made the decision about what kind of RV they were they were going to use. Uh, I'm curious because one of the things that I loved about the pictures that you had is your marble backsplash. And that just makes the whole kitchen look you know really polished off is, is that real marble that you have in your backsplash well the marble it's it's marble looking porcelain yeah. tile on the backsplash but we have an actual marble tabletop in the dining room it's thick so the computer's on and right it's now <laughs> thick and very heavy and um but yeah we do have a lot of heavy elements in this coach and but when, but, we, but, when we bought it it had 48 mirrors because it's for 1999 yeah. so it's pretty gaudy yeah we do but uh but I, I think that's important you mentioned that because the weight's a huge factor when you're doing a renovation on any rv because when a regular home it's it's fine you can use whatever materials you want but in an rv 
you know, I don't know if you know this, but over 50, it's estimated over 50% of all RVs on the road are overweight on at least one measure, whether that's tire weight, axle weight, total weight, wow. whatever. But this coach being a diesel pusher, and that's another reason why we chose something like this mm -hmm. is we wanted to be able to have a lot of cargo carry capacity. Mm -hmm. Little did we know we'd be using that all up for carrying books around. <laughs> um, the books are heavy. In front of our, our book, but the uh, our coach had over 5,000 pound cargo carry capacity and even with all of our gear on board we still had 2,000 pounds to spare so we had some wiggle room with the renovation but the reality of it is we actually ended up having almost the same weight before and after on this coach mm -hmm. because you got to remember we took out those 44 mirrors we took mm -hmm. out the tile floor and the carpeting floor to replace it with mm -hmm. the luxury vinyl plank the big booth dinette the bulky booth dinette the bulky we took booth. out yeah, um, the, we took out one fridge and replaced it with another, so they were similar in weight. We had yeah. a lot of swap outs, so a lot of things that we took out that were heavy were replaced by things that were heavy. So the end result was not very much. It was only a couple hundred pounds different. What? Yeah, I was surprised. Uh, now, if you had a lightweight towable, though, that couple hundred pounds could be a big factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for us, the t uh, couple hundred pounds is a make or break, right? Because we also, <laughs> we tow with an SUV, which has less towing capacity than, you know, a typical pickup. Um, but we choose that so we have the third row so we can separate our kids a little bit more on the drive. And so, you know, we're like, we took out a love seat on our new trailer and we weighed it. And then we figured out how much the new vinyl plank floor was going to weigh to replace it. So... <laughs> It's so happy to hear that you're being that considerate of your weight. I think that's really important. And so things like that backsplash, you might, if you're at Home Depot, you might look at some of those. If you have some wiggle room, you might use like those plastic stick-on tiles. And stick if you tile, have even yeah. less weight, maybe just a really nice looking wallpaper as a, as a decorative accent. So there's yeah. some other options, but I'm so glad to hear you're being mindful of weight because that's a big safety factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also we want our tow vehicle to last as long as possible, right? In the same way that you want the transmission and the engine that's built into your home to last as long as possible. So we don't want to overweigh mm -hmm. it. Uh, Tom and Kate are asking, what is your favorite part of the Renault? What's your favorite feature, feature or your favorite area or your favorite detail? The bedroom. <laughs> yeah, I think, it looks yeah. beautiful, and I really like to sleep. <laughs> I love to sleep, and it was a crazy bedroom before. And if anyone's seen our before and after photos, and we've got a whole RV makeover series on our on our website at rvlove.com and on YouTube, you can watch it. But we had nine mirrors in the bedroom, and it was crazy town in there, and it's very harsh, and it was very. Nobody wants to be seeing themselves first thing in the morning. Like you know, you just don't need. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a very harsh environment. Now it's very soothing and comforting. It's like a luxury sanctuary. hotel yeah. room now. I like it, and we actually even and then people are going to laugh at us and probably give us a hard time, but they, this was Jane's idea, which <laughs> she talked us into, and I actually love them now. Is we've got little chandeliers by the bedside that that are mounted in there, and they just a couple little hooks and and a little. Uh, what do you call those things? Those little little bungee hooks, cords. Little bungee cords, and we just hook them up um, on travel days, and they don't budge. But they just feels I don't know. We, we work from the RV, Adam, and so we're we we live in three hundred and thirty square feet of space. So we live, we work, and so it's so nice to go back in the bedroom and you can close the door, and it's like a complete escape from the rest of the RVs. It is like Mike said, a sanctuary. You can hide away, and it's very soft, and it it does feel a bit luxurious. <laughs> So that's what I love. That's mine. What about you? What's your favorite? See, I spend bedroom? most of my time in the kitchen. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I, I do love the bedroom. It's really a wonderful, and that's one of the most significant changes in the RV yeah. as far as the feel of the room. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of elements in the kitchen that I'm really excited mm -hmm. about, but uh, I, I still would agree with. Like well, we get some custom-made custom stainless items, one for the stovetop and one for a kitchen a counter extension. And I'm I'm proud of those because I designed them, but I, uh, I I still think the favorite room. I'm still with Julie that the bedroom is still one of the most significant changes for all kinds of reasons. We're off love. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to move right along from there, and it's my yeah. job, my yeah. responsibility, to remind everybody that season two of the RVers is airing right now on Discovery. It's going to be on Fun Roads and PBS this summer, and you'll be able to see. 
Mark and Julie as guests on the show. Uh, if you're watching later in the summer on PBS or if you're watching on one of the online uh, versions of the show. Uh, guys, what would you say is something that you had initially thought about doing in your remodel and then you changed your mind on that? Maybe you could tell us what that thing was, uh, if there was something, and uh, why you changed your mind on it. I know exactly the answer to that. I really, 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 really wanted heated floors. I really wanted heated and floors. And we almost did it. We researched it. We, we had did. the products picked out. We were planning on doing it. But then I mentioned earlier in the call that we had that timeline pressure. And I said, nope, forget it. That's, that's, <laughs> and it was an extra expense. It was a very, and... it was a very expensive option. <clears throat> and it was a, it would be a very time-consuming option the way we had planned on doing it. So. That extra extra complexity just got nixed, um, but that I knew Julie was going to say <laughs> that. that was... Getting up in the morning and you know having nice warm floors. We came here to Colorado um, in early April, just a couple of days before a spring storm, and the insulation on this coach, being a diesel pusher motorhome and a good quality one, is much better than it was in our previous gas motorhome. And anyone that lives in an RV, no matter what kind it is, you know that it isn't insulated as well as a regular stick and brick home. And especially like travel trailers, um, you know, as you go up the food chain to the higher end diesel pushes, the insulation gets better and you're all season RVs, but typically they're just not as good for insulation. And so we went from what was going to be triple digits in Arizona and came here to, we're in the teens. We're in the teens. Here. Mm -hmm. And so it was cold for a few days, but we wanted to be here for the spring storm because it was just beautiful and, and, and it melted off very quickly. <laughs> but for a few days, it was really cold. And I was just thinking, God, it would have been nice to have a heated floor. <laughs> Maybe our next RV will have heated floors because that, that is definitely on my fantasy wish list for RVs. That, that, that would be it. Did you have something in mind, Mark? Is there anything else or was it just the heated floors? <laughs> um. No, my my job was trying to reduce the scale of the project. <laughs> my job was reducing, not growing. I add so, things to the list. Yeah, I had the opposite challenge. So. That's kind of our <laughs> whole thing in life, though. <laughs> I'm kind of adding things to the Julie's list, the and grower, Mark's trying to take things <laughs> off the list, yeah. and he's always right. So not always. <laughs> it's, <on> yeah, now. <laughs> it's been stated to the universe. <laughs> so coming from. Uh, a construction background, Mark, what was different or what would you say is something to be aware of that's different when renovating an RV compared to renovating a sticks and bricks? Um, well, we touched on the weight piece earlier. That's definitely a major factor I'd want to make sure everyone considers. Um, but another one is a lot of RVs, at least in the last 10 to 15 years, have slide outs. So not mo most homes don't have moving walls <laughs> So you, that you have to take into consideration, especially with flooring. And then I think another factor would be that you need to be mindful that this is going to be mobile. It's going to be moving down the road when you finish this project. So a lot of your construction elements need to be more thought out and also more permanent in design so that mm -hmm. they're not shaking, rattling, falling apart mm -hmm. down the road. And so I think those are those are a few of the bigger ones yeah. that are, I think are big differences. Yeah, we really had to balance the desire for the aesthetics that we wanted with being practical. So we both worked from the road. We both wanted separate workspaces. And we didn't want to have to pack too much up and down every time. So we're pretty fortunate that we could just, except for Mark's workspace, because it's in the driver's seat area, <laughs> he uses that for driving coffee. But the other main desk in our living area, I can pretty much leave everything set up on that on a drive day. Really don't have to put, we take very few things off the counters when we travel. I don't know if you can see. And part of that's it. part of that's that we're a diesel pusher. I mean, right, towable, drives, especially a bumper right pull towable, have a lot more movement. And so you'd have to be even more diligent wouldn't about packing the, down. Wouldn't have the suspension like we have here. But just to give you an example, when we took out the booth dinette and Mark Pilt was one of those big, chunky, old-fashioned ones and we wanted to open up the space and I like to sit with my legs up and have a – I wanted a separate second sort of lounging area. And so Mark created this L-shaped dining area with storage underneath and what we did is because we've got this, and you can't see it now, but anyone that's seen our videos or, you know, seen the photos on the website, we've got this round marble table and it's heavy and it probably wouldn't tip over on drive days, but we like cut a little notch out of the underneath of the bench so that if in the unlikely bit the table tipped, 
it would catch on that and on the the foot, the round foot, and then pop it back down again. So little mm. things like that, just little practical changes, mm. just make it easier for a drive days and reduce the risk of anything going bad if you hit a big bump or things right. happen that you don't want. <laughs> in well, and, you know, and then space considerations, you know, a lot of homes are larger, but with this small space considerations you have in an RV, you need to be mindful of multi-use space. You know, whether it converts from a bed to a workspace or if it converts from one to another, you know, other dining area, having that flexibility is important when you have limited square footage. Yeah, I know. So at, at our stage in the trailer, we're doing our vinyl plank floor. And uh, one thing that I find frustrating is that every, well, I, I have to work the saw outside which means every time I need to cut a piece, I have to go down three stairs, cut a piece, and then up three stairs. And it's not only that my body is aching from doing flooring, but also because I've been running stairs all day long. And so <laughs> that's something I, I you know, found to be different. That's a great point. I'm, I'm, thanks for reminding me of that, because that was one of my biggest factors in this remodel versus other projects I've done in traditional homes is that limited space and the workspace uh, we had the luxury of being able to have most of my workspace set outside. I still did have those couple steps in, but one of the biggest factors is, you know, most people when they're doing a remodel on their home, they might be remodeling the kitchen or they might be remodeling a living room. They can move the furniture from that room into another room in the house, keeping it inside protected and just out of the way. With an RV, that space is so limited, everything had to go out. It had to be out of the RV and which then affected the environment. We needed to make sure we were in an environment that had good weather and then some tents, believe it or not. We had three tents it's like for this project. City. One was a tent for inbound design elements. One was a tent for the <laughs> furniture outside of the coach. And yeah, one was for construction yeah. um, elements. And yeah. uh, so it was, that space is a big factor when you're. And we were RV. lucky that the weather was good the whole summer we were there. So. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Mark had a big trailer outside. Our friend Brett, whose property we were renovating on this big flatbed trailer, Mark had all of his tools out there and all of the flooring and the wood, and he didn't have to break it up and put it away every day, which would be a real nuisance too when you don't That was a huge home. factor for time is no, no setup and breakdown time because a lot of times when you're doing a construction project, a significant amount of your time is setting up for the job for the day. But mm -hmm. I was able to keep everything covered under the awning, Yep. set up at all times. So I could run out and just do one quick cut whenever I wanted. So if somebody's probably listening right now and they're thinking, you know what, this is the inspiration I need to remodel my RV. And their husband or wife is probably really upset they're watching. But that's a different story. <laughs> and so uh, where would you say is a good starting point? Wh where do you start the process if you're ready to model an RV what recommendations would you have? What tools would you use? Well, I think the first one is to try and get your overall plan decided for mm -hmm. your for your scope of the project. You know that take your time with that. Take your time with that. Know what you're getting into so that you have a you have a timeline and you have a budget, and also know that the budget is probably going to go over what you originally planned. So leave some padding. Don't say, "Oh, I only have four thousand total." And, you know, then only plan on three, right? right, so that you have room. But, you know, have it, have it all thought out. Have your environment you're going to be working in. Be a, Do an honest assessment of your own skill set mm. or the skill set of those who could help you. Um, be mindful of your tools. I personally don't carry a lot of construction tools with me on the RV, so I needed to do this project at my our friend's house in Oregon. Yeah. And he's got a Airbnb. shed with yeah. all the tools. It was fantastic. He had all these battery-powered Ryobi tools with all the rechargeable batteries. So we didn't even have to be plugged in for most of the tools. We were just mm. recharging the batteries every day. Everything off the lithium batteries, mind you, everything, mm. Mm. tile cutting saws, the whole thing. And we were so lucky that our friend had all the tools. I hadn't really thought that through. <laughs> I hadn't thought about what number of tools, different kinds of tools we would need and where we would get them from and in our old home mark you probably had a lot of those tools. I had some of those but our but friend brett had yeah. like every possible tool <laughs> you could need. And i was so happy about that because my god this baseboard trim would be really nice instead of a little hammer if you had an air gun oh i've got one of those boom so we had every single tool 
to so make it speed more up the efficient. process more efficient yeah I'm otherwise you might have to rent those tools which can get expensive and just inconvenient you know mm. so we were really lucky with that i mean but it was a reasonable scale project this one you managed this was pretty big scale i would say yeah this was a larger scale than i think most people will be taking on especially in that timeline but <laughs> <laughs> the cut the timeline that we don't recommend the crazy timeline mm-hmm. yeah right and i know that uh, people can watch your uh, makeover series on YouTube or on rvlove.com and uh, see all the different things that you did and, and walk through those steps. And of course, there's you know hundreds and probably thousands of other uh, remodel videos on YouTube as well. Um, did you have a single place or did you have a certain spot where you would go back to for inspiration when you were trying to figure out what to do in this spot or what to do in that corner or was it much more broad and brainstorming? Well, when we first got the RV, like I said, we decided to live in it for three months first. And so I had ideas and I created a spreadsheet and I divided up by room. And I would share that like in a Google Doc with Jane in Australia and take photos. And I mean, I really leaned on her a lot for for this and for this um, direction. And some of the creative ideas that she had that I never would have thought of, like flipping the cabinets and if that sounds weird to people as you look at the traditional um raised panel panel door Mm -hmm. in rvs and the inside when you open it up was actually a very square clean line and jane said why don't we flip the cabinets and i'm like what i i didn't think it was a very good idea to start with but then mark (laughs) What I think that would look better, but can I even do it is the work. So yeah, I think- and that was the big trick is can you do it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I like the idea of the design and the look, but, you know, I wasn't going to take it on until I was confident. So but, like 40 and turns out, or something? And turns out it was good that we did flip them because had we not, we mentioned a lot of the a lot of our cabinet doors had mirrors on them. And those cabinet doors that have mirrors on them are actually not finished cabinets they don't have the raised panel in them so mm. if i when we removed the mirrors had we not been flipping <clears throat> them over they would have needed been to ugly. otherwise be replaced had like so. cement cement glue on it and things like that so i think <laughs> no. but in terms of um you know just just going through it and working through and talking it through together i mean I, like i said we leaned on jane a lot for that design direction and you know one of the things that we did do that I think a lot of people wouldn't need to do, but I think is a really interesting and unusual part of this whole process was we were doing this in a town in rural northeastern Oregon, mm. and the nearest Walmart is like 90 minutes away. There isn't a stoplight for 90 minutes. So what that means is you don't have the stores there to shop for all of your decor items. There was a local hardware store. They had the most store, important thing. They had a hardware store. Hardware store, <laughs> which we would visit three or sometimes five times in a day. It was only a mile down the road. We would literally go to the hardware store three to five times a day. So that was great. But all the design elements, and again, because the the nearest decent stores really were a four-hour drive away in Boise, Idaho. So, you know, we had to be very organized with, and this was, again, Jane, like, had the vision of what it was going to look like, which she wouldn't tell us, by the way. It was a surprise. <laughs> and then she and I drove four hours to Boise and spent two nights in a hotel and just shopped till we dropped and packed the Jeep and came back four hours later and then everything. But then that was done. Don't look at the I credit think, card for a No, there weeks. was a big credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, don't look at the credit card. But, but then it, at least it was all done. And because we had that cohesive vision, then we could just focus on the build and then the design came in very quickly at the last minute. So, but I wouldn't say that there were any particular, I, I probably spent some time on Pinterest and, yeah, I like this, I like it was, this. Though, yeah. We loved the online thing too, though. Amazon yeah. was delivering something almost every day from UPS to FedEx. Was, multiple times was, a day. <laughs> that's what I remember. I we said needed we had a, a delivery tent. tent. We had a special tent for inbound. Yeah, that was that, was yeah. that tent. We're on first name basis with the FedEx and UPS. <laughs> Drivers. Yeah, I know what that's like right now. <laughs> Anthony's asking, yeah. uh, Anthony Nally is asking, he says, your RV is stunning, uh, but when booking a site over the phone and you're asked about the year of your coach, how do you handle when they have RV age restrictions? And I know we ran into this as well because the trailer that we bought, uh, intentionally, we bought something that was very dated so that we could make it our own and bring it the way we wanted it to be and renovate it. Uh, but sometimes we get asked, you know, what what year is your trailer? And our first one was in 1992. And so uh, tell me a little bit about how you handle that or 
uh, has that been a concern for you if people are asking about the age of your rig? You know, to be really honest with you, it hasn't ever been a problem. And we knew that was the risk when we bought this coach buying an older one that some RV parks and RV resorts, more upscale ones in particular, but also just RV parks and campgrounds, especially near major metropolitan areas and cities where there's so much demand that they can afford to be um, more. So, you know, cities like Portland, Oregon, um, Seattle. And we just figured, you know, everything with an RV is a trade-off, right? And the 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 small number of RV parks we would encounter that with wasn't worth the yeah, so there's so many other to choose is from. One of the biggest factors is where you stay. We predominantly, you know, are either boondocking or we're staying in Thousand Trails campgrounds right. or in other campgrounds that don't have that a strict age restriction. You know, it's interesting because a very high percentage of campgrounds have that rule on the books, but how many people enforce that is very low. Mm -hmm. And then when we've actually stayed at some high end um, RV parks right. and, one, and they they actually <laughs> have rules that are a pride of ownership. They have the original rule of AIDS, but then you say, well, we have a country coach and we send them pictures that is a, that usually turns the table and allows us to stay at some of those yeah. parks that still do have restrictions. But cause a lot of them, what they're really trying to do is um, restrict trailers that are being held together with duct tape and have garbage bags over the windows right. and you know sometimes look a storm could happen like any of us can have something to happen to our rv where we have to do a quick fix and it's not ideal right <laughs> that can happen to any of us um but some of the yeah we've done that <laughs> uh, but some some of these um i guess what they're trying to do is just a keep their guests happy but also it can be a safety thing Adam we spoke to a campground about it once in in Portland actually and said look why do you have this rule and they said it's actually now I don't know if this is true but this is what they told me so I'm just sharing and I hadn't thought of this before they said it's actually not us it's the county because it's to do with insurance because the older an RV gets your older electrical system the old RV propane fridges they actually and I don't want to scare anybody here but they they are a higher risk of a fire and so that is a factor I think for campgrounds and their in their insurances, I'm sure that some of them, if, if insurance mm. for them or the local county says you can't or you have to pay a lot more in insurance if you have older RVs, something to think about. Long-winded answer, Anthony. I'm sorry to your story. Uh, to your story, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I'm a bit chatty, but um, we personally have never found it an issue. And to Mark's point, since we got our um, upgraded our power system with our lithium batteries and solar, we we actually are boondocking more. So. But we've got a tow vehicle, you know, we can park further out and then if we want to go to an area that has those restrictions, we just drive in in the Jeep and we don't have to necessarily park the RV there. So what percentage of the time would you guys say you're off grid? Well, in mm. our early years of travel, we were about 90% in a campground mm -hmm. and 10% out and this year we're closer to 50-50. So. Yeah, we spent five weeks in the desert for the first mm -hmm. five weeks of the pandemic, and um, so we've had a high percentage. It might be sixty forty, it's, it's but we're right in. We've definitely been increasing, but we still mm -hmm. spend significant time in campgrounds. Mm -hmm. We like we like to mix it up. Yeah, we like how many options. So, uh, in light of that, how has having a uh, solar and battery and going to be boondocking? How did that affect decisions or did it affect decisions while you were working through your remodel, what you installed and how you installed it and, and where you installed it? Uh, did any of those play factor for you? Well, it was a factor in that we knew we were going to be doing more boondocking with this RV, having that mm -hmm. off-grid system. And therefore, we wanted to be mindful of, for example, the flooring surface. We wanted a very easy floor to maintain and keep clean in a dusty environment when you're out boondocking. That was one clear example I could speak to. Um, but as far as things inside, they weren't a big impact on other design elements with that power system. Yeah, we but. knew that what we were getting was pretty robust. And I think being an older, an older RV too, a lot of our systems are pretty simple. We, we don't watch television, so there's not a high draw on that. The biggest draw on our coach is the residential refrigerator. Right. Yeah. Well, to speak, I guess to speaking to that with appliances and such, we actually put residential appliances, residential fridge, residential high output convection oven, and 
we have a lot of the, because like we have the power, so it wasn't really much a factor. In fact, you know, this winter when we were boondocking in the desert, we really were treating we were. It's almost as if it is plugged in when we're out boondocking. To be honest, it's if it's reasonably sunny and it's not the winter solstice, we can function pretty normally. Uh, someone did ask about your fireplace. Is that hanging on the wall? Is that built in? Do you have to take it down when you travel? It, by the way, it looks beautiful. So uh, tell me a little bit about that. Right now. <laughs> that is one of our favorite pieces, actually. And we did some a lot of the design around that. And funny little thing about that, not only does that stay in place, even the little crystal stones inside it that have extra reflection, even those don't budge. They all stay place. They don't fall out of it. But that fireplace does stay in place the whole time. And a funny story with that is when we were shopping that, the when you looked at the specs, it's uh, from Napoleon, I think. But mm -hmm. when you look at the specifications for that, it says that it's five inches deep, right? And so when we were designing the wall and doing all original measurements for putting the fridge cabinet and making sure that it would fit without the slide hitting it, I was banking mm -hmm. on five inches deep. Well, when it arrived, and then we put the curved glass front in front of it, that curved glass added a whole inch. The inch doesn't sound like much if you're residential, but if you're trying to slide it, put it behind a sliding wall, that really does. We and almost so thought we couldn't. We almost it. didn't get to use that. So I actually upset. had to. I actually had to bury that into the wall um, instead of recess it. Recess it. Yeah, it wasn't flush mount. I had to recess it into the wall to make it fit. So it was a tight one. But we yeah. do love that. And it actually does heat, too. We can actually heat the coach. Yeah, it heats uh, up to 400 well. square feet. So it's it's nice to have that. But even just today, I mean, it's mid-80s outside, but we just like it for the ambiance. It's just <laughs> you can change the colors. You can change the – you can see an orange light there. You can change the colors. So it's just fun. And it's uh, – it, 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 as Mark was saying, like that is actually – we've got one slide out in this motorhome. And when that comes in, that is the only thing – that is not accessible as the fireplace. And that's unusual because a lot of RVs, you know, you might not be able to get to the fridge or the bathroom right. or different parts of the RV, but literally that electric fireplace is the only thing that we can't access when our slide out is in. Mm -hmm. And that's that was another you know, important thing to think about when you're RV shopping, really. Mm -hmm. Well, Mark, Julie, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. I, I'm so happy to get to know you a little bit more. And uh, also, I'm excited that you're going to be on season two uh, of the RVers. Uh, tell us a little bit about how we can get more information about RV love. Tell us all the places that our viewers tonight can connect with you. Well, the first place to go would be our website, rvlove.com, because from there you can find everything. You know, we've got a YouTube channel, RV Love. We're all over social media, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook. We're everywhere. Um, pretty much if you type in RV Love, you'll find us. But the website's always the best place to go and get on our email list because there's a lot of things that we share there that we don't share anywhere else, and we've got a, an exciting announcement coming up this week. So. You can also find our book, Living the RV Life, Your Ultimate yep. Guide to Life on the Road, mm -hmm. online or in most good booksellers across the and country. On the so, and yeah. on the website. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if people want to see more detailed processes about your renovation, all of that is also documented right there. I know it's on your blog, uh, oh. and I think it's via your YouTube channel as well, right? Yeah, we actually, and we actually created a whole YouTube series about it. And this was the vision as part of the renovation with Jane coming out. It's funny. Jane is a, a fantastic, not only she a great designer, she's a really great personality. And it was always her dream to have like a home HDTV TV show. And I'm like, well, we're not HDTV, but <laughs> hey, I can do YouTube videos. How about that? So uh, she, we created a whole eight-part series called The Ultimate RV Makeover, and it shows from the beginning and then the planning and the thought process all the way to ripping the RV apart to putting it back together and all the – all the touches and what we did in an eight-part series ending with the final reveal in episode eight. And I kind of had in my mind that it would be like a mini HGTV series. So it's really fun to watch. And I think what's really fun is when we get comments and emails from people so often saying, you inspired me to buy an older RV and renovate it, or I was going to change and I'm going to keep the one that I've got and I'm just going to make it more beautiful and, and do it that way. So I think that's what's been so rewarding, not only for us to be able to make our home truly our own, but to give other people the inspiration that they can do it too. And to know that anyone can RV on any budget, you know, just 
start with what you can afford. You can do some simple things to make it beautiful. You don't have to go all out like we did here, but this is our full-time home. You know, you can just do a few little things like you're doing and make it beautiful. But uh, you can find that series on our rvlove.com. Just scroll down on the website and you'll find a button there for the whole series. And, and don't forget to vote for us on the apartment therapy contest. Yes. Please. Be awesome. Thank yes. you so much. The, Thanks for having the, us. the link to the contest is in the description, whether you're watching on Facebook or whether you're watching on YouTube. The link to the apartment therapy contest is right there. Just click it. It's the very first set of pictures that come up. Just click the thumbs up and let's represent RV life all over that contest. Uh, one more yes. uh, comment before we go. Anthony says that uh, CC will be on the next episode of the RVers. That'll come up this Saturday. And uh, we shot a segment called Entertainment 101 with Chris and Cherie inside Mark and Julie's coach. So if you would like to see CC right. on Discovery Channel this Saturday, 8 a.m. at uh, 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 Central, Mark and Julie, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. It's been a whole lot of fun. Thanks, Thanks so Adam. Much, Adam. Thanks for having us. Bye.